You order pizza much? Ah, uh, no, it's not one of my favorites. Why have you made a pizza? What's going on here? We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do some maths about pizza cutting, and actually, it's gonna give rise to the lazy caterer's sequence. The idea of the lazy caterer's sequence is you want to get as many pieces as possible for a fixed number of cuts. And they're straight line cuts, that's important. And we don't actually care about the size of those pieces. They don't have to be fair, we don't have to- No, this doesn't have to be fair, this is just to say, you know, given five cuts, the maximum number of pieces I can get with five cuts of my pizza. I, I feel bad calling it a pizza, but I'm gonna- sorry Italy, <laughs> I can't even say it. I think I can do six, and you'll see why I say think, because it's gonna be tricky. But let's do the maths first, and then I'll try cutting it. That's the best circle I've ever drawn a diagram That's a about. good circle! That is a good circle. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, let's start with a diagram, and let's imagine I can do one cut. It doesn't really matter what I do, I do that. So that's gonna give me two pieces. Now I'm gonna add a second cut, and again, this one doesn't actually matter, but I'm gonna try and do something clever and do that. So now I have one, two, three, four pieces. If I'm cutting a pizza in the traditional way, I'm gonna do my next one to pass through here. And then you're gonna get six pieces, and it's gonna look like how you would normally, if you're a sane person, <laughs> cut a pizza. Because they'd be fair, it'd be fair for everyone. I agree, they would be fair, they would be approximately equally sized, especially if I'd done a better job of these first two. However, we want to maximize the number of regions we get. So rather than cutting through this point, I actually kind of want to avoid that point and do something like that. Because what's going to happen if I do this one is I've got this new region that wouldn't have been there had I gone through that. So I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instead of six. So I've been able to increase the number of pieces of pizza I obtain. But obviously this one's quite small and no one wants it. But we only care about the number. So I'm gonna to have to start keeping track of this because I think otherwise I'm gonna lose it. So if we say n is the number of cuts and then f of n is gonna equal the number of regions. Because what we want to know is, given a fixed number of allowed straight line cuts, how do we work out for that n the maximum number of regions? So if I have zero cuts, I have one region. If I have one cut, I have two regions. If I had two cuts, I had four regions. <laughs> think about that one. And then I've added a third cut and I've got seven. Now the next one, we want to think about a bit more carefully about what we're doing when we make this next cut. So, again I have lots of options. I could try and do something similar to up here and do it down here, maybe. Maybe I want to go through this point now, maybe I want to kind of do something like this, or this. There's a whole host of things I could potentially do. Key to this is thinking about what property in my choice of cut leads to the maximum number of regions that I can end up with. And if you think about what we did before, when we said I could have gone here, but that sort of just has one intersection point that they all overlap. But by moving it, I made my new line have two intersection points here and here. Basically, that's the trick to this whole thing. Your new cut needs to intersect as many of the previous cuts as you possibly can. Because every time it intersects it, you get a new region created. Now at the moment there are three lines, and the maximum number of intersections I can get therefore is three, because I'm only allowed to do straight lines. If I intersect this one, I can't intersect it again without bending my line. It's impossible, because the line would have to be parallel and have to go directly over it. So if I have one intersection, that's the most I can get. So when I draw this line, I just need to make sure I intersect the three previous lines that exist. So I think something like this looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna draw this one, and I'm gonna go here, we've got one, two, three, and down to the end. I've added the fourth line. There were already three existed, so it intersected three intersections, which is the maximum I can have, and what that's doing is that divides this line up into four pieces. And each of those pieces corresponds to a new region. And that's the key, and I will demonstrate. So again, we had this region up here. I have an intersection, I've added this new region. That's the new one that I've kind of broken the old one up into those two pieces by having that intersection. Before, without the blue one, we had this region. But now I've added an intersection. That's the new region I broke that old one up into. Again, we had this wig on here, this pizza-shaped piece. I've now added this smaller one. And again, we had this big one over here, didn't we? I've added this one down the bottom. 
is the new one. So you can see there, each piece of the new line, broken up by those three intersection points into four pieces, each piece actually is the boundary of a new region. So that means that when I add, I draw line n, there are n minus one others before it. It's going to have n minus one intersections if I do it correctly. That's the hard part, as you'll see in a minute. I'm getting my excuses in early before I try this on the pizza. If I can get those n minus one intersections, then I'm going to get n pieces of my line, which means n new regions to add to however many there were before. Can you always draw that line? Can you always follow that rule of breaking all the other lines? You should be able to um, practically like, like mathematically, yes. Theoretically, it's definitely possible. Practically, if you make a really bad choice about how you draw your lines, you might struggle. So if you put them really, really close together, they begin to get smaller and smaller, these regions. So it becomes harder and harder to draw what's happening as you move down. But again, it's even harder with a real pizza. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Um, but now the, the formula. So we've figured out what's happening, but we want the formula. Right? We want a nice, easy way to do this. We don't want to have to start at the beginning every time to figure out what's going on. Um, so just to sort of complete the story of what we've got here then, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven we had before, and then we've got one, two, three, four new ones. So we're getting 11 when we have four cuts. And what we've said is when we draw the fourth line, we add four the previous number. So the next one, five, we add five, we're going to get 16. And that's going to continue. So six, 22, seven, 29, etc. So this kind of gives us a way of building these later cases. However, what's the formula? We're going to need to write down an equation, actually solve that to get f of n, where you just plug in n, get your output. So if we think about being at step n, the number of regions at step n was the number of regions we already had plus n new ones. That's what we figured out. But then you say, well, what's the number of regions I had at n minus one? Well, that was the number of regions I had at the step before, plus n minus one, and then plus n. So like this piece is equal to that piece. And then, well, that's f of n minus three. I mean, I'm sure you see where this is going. <laughs> minus two, so n minus one. And we carry on and we go all the way down to f of one plus two plus three plus dot 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 plus n. Uh, f of one was one, but we also have f of naught, didn't we? Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus n, where f of naught is one. I have one region if I make no cuts. I have a whole pizza, feeling greedy. So what we've got then is one plus the sum of the first n natural numbers. Oh, minus a 12. <laughs> if we go to infinity, maybe it's <laughs> minus a 12, yes. Uh, <laughs> just determined to get me to go down that route, aren't you? No, um, <laughs> definitely not. So, oh, I've written infinity, I literally wrote infinity now. Sum one to m of those numbers. And I've written it like this because some of you watching this will know the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers, but I like to derive my own formulas. I like to explain where they've come from. So this one's, he's rolling his eyes. This one, this one is doable, right? And it's nice because it has a story. Gauss did this in, I think, primary school or high school. So he was supposedly very, very good in his class and his teacher was like, I'm fed up of you finishing everything really quickly. Add up the first 100 numbers. You know, imagine he's like eight or something, thinking it would take a very long time for him to do that. And, you know, he got the answer immediately. And the reason he did it was using this approach, which was they come in pairs. You take this one, you pair it up with this one. You take this one, pair it up with this one. You take the next one, pair it up. Every pair added together is n plus one. But then how many pairs do you have? Well, if you start with an even number, you have exactly half of that number of pairs. So each pair adds up to n plus one. There are n over two of them. That's your answer. And that's the answer up here. That's our formula. And again, most of you watching this probably have seen this before, but if you haven't, that's where it comes from. That's what Gauss did when he was, I think, in primary school, and he figured out the sum of the first 100 integers was 5,050. Yeah, 5,050. For us, it means number of regions, if I have n cuts, the number of regions is one plus n over two times n plus one. That's the formula. So if I want to do six, Let's suppose I want to do six cuts, which is what I'm going to try and do with the pizza. One plus six over two times at seven is going to be 22 
If we had it in the table, but we can see it from our formula as well. So in theory, I should be able to cut this pizza with only six straight cuts. I should be able to get 22 pieces of delicious, delightful tortilla, pizza, bread, cheese, tomato thing. All right, you've, you've set yourself up. You get six straight cuts. So the first one doesn't really matter, right? They're all relative to that. So let's just kind of put my metal ruler. All right, and I think the second one, I kind of like where I was going last time, which wasn't quite perfect. Okay, there's this two is, cuts. This is messy. <laughs> so the trick here, what I'm thinking about is I don't want this middle one to be too small in case I've got to slice it again. I don't want this one to be too small. Judge what you're doing with these angles. You're going to eat them, mate. <laughs> this is dinner. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's three. Right now is where it gets tough. Um, so I've got to cross the three lines I already have. I think that's going to work. Let's try it. This is the most useful way to cut a pizza. <laughs> Useless way to cut a pizza. It's the laziest way to cut It's the laziest way. I think, I think I'd rather just... It doesn't look very lazy. It doesn't look lazy, does it? Okay, but we do, I believe... Yeah, that one's crossed one, two. Okay. Was that the fourth one? Is that all I've done? <laughs> yeah, four. You've got two more cuts. I think this will in theory. One, two, three, four. Yep, that fifth line crossed four times, so that's good. It's getting cheese everywhere now. Ah, oh, no, I ripped it in half. <laughs> Last one. It's got to cross way too many lines now. Oh, 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 oh. I think at this point my chef career has, has gone out the window anyway, so. 22 pieces. I think there are 22 pieces, yeah. And I want to remember that bit there. So this, so this is one piece I accidentally ripped. Yeah. So. Should we just count these, right? So that's one. One. This is two. This is three. Four. Five. Some of these are so bad. Six. Seven. Eight. Hopefully they start to get bigger now. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. I think that was a leftover from me accidentally slicing it twice. Sixteen. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Seventeen. It can't be only eighteen. What have you done? What have I done? It's too hard to keep track of what's going on. So maybe that was a separate one. Oh, there's two there. Well, that was a terrible effort. <laughs> it was terrible. We're gonna have to do that again. <laughs> you wanna do it just tortilla? I'm gonna do a better job this time of keeping track. Now, final cut. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Giant number seven, eight, whoops, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There we go. The perfect way to cut a pizza. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. You know, we seem to make a lot of these about cutting things and the mathematics of chopping and slicing and all that kind of stuff. You can keep the eyes open. First, I'm going to roll it like this. If you'd like to see more videos, I'll put some links down in the video description and on the screen, of course. And speaking of on the screen, those names you're seeing at the moment, they're some of our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to join them, support the making of these videos and get access to some bonus stuff, well, links in the usual places for that too. We really appreciate you, Patreon supporter or not. <laughs>